we go. Hello and welcome to episode 30 of the Couch Scouts podcast. I am here with my co-host Matthew Rupert. How's it going? And our very special guest, John, aka the Foz. What's up? What's going on? Happy to be here. Yeah, so if you don't know, um, John is kind of our local resident quarterbacks guru. We have brought him in to help us with the rookie guide. Uh, specifically, he's going to be doing all the quarterback write-ups and the film grades in the rookie guide. And you know, he's a former coach. So I, I feel like, you know, a lot of times people will give me in the comments the, oh, you clearly never played football. or You know, it's like, okay, you don't need to have played football or coached football to be able to watch tape and understand what you're watching and give some analysis on these guys. But in some situations, and particularly with the quarterback position, I think it's really helpful that he was a coach and he's got a much better understanding of the scheme and, and what the defense is trying to do and what the offense is trying to do against it than, uh, than we do. So it's, it's great to kind of bring him in and have that extra voice. So, John, I appreciate you being with us. Thank you. I appreciate that. It's very humble to hear all that. You know, I don't, I was, I'm definitely a better coach than I was a player, but you know, that's a, with how well I played, it's a very, very low bar. So, you know, I'm, I'm happy to give my two cents when I can, but yeah, my experience is, is helpful for sure. When I'm watching these guys. Network says, howdy, what's up network and uh dynasty dogs as well says, what's up gents. Hey Mike, how you doing? Thanks for watching. Uh, so tonight we are going to be back uh, continuing our Inside the Prospect series, looking specifically at the quarterback position. Before we get into it, I just want to hit a couple of things, just a little bit of housekeeping to get out of the way. First of all, the rookie guide. Guys, we have been busting our tails on this rookie guide to get it ready for you guys in time for the draft. We are going to be going super deep in this thing. So you, this is not just like, hey, these are the first round prospects that everybody knows about. Like We're going through round three, four guys, guys, we wouldn't even touch in round four that, you know, we've seen at least a little bit of hype on. So people are probably wondering, so we probably should watch some film and give you guys some thoughts on it just in case you're wondering. So, I mean, we have really like gone deep into the weeds on this draft class. Every single prospect that you could even think about taking in your rookie draft, we're going to have the breakdown trait by trait, you know, strengths and weaknesses in every relevant trait, and, uh, you know, our film grade, where we rank them, all of it. I think it's going to be a really valuable resource for you guys. So we're going to be selling that um, next week. So keep an eye out for more details on where you can buy that because we are really excited to get it in your hands. Um, and then one place you can definitely get updates uh, on, on the progress of that rookie guide is in our Discord. We've got a free Discord so definitely hop in there, check it out. Guys are in there chatting every day. We'll even tag everybody when we're uh, doing live watching film. So a lot of times it's like, all right, I got to study these guys anyway to prepare for the rookie draft or prepare for um, one of these episodes. And so I'll just share my screen, live stream, hang out with you guys while I'm watching film, tell you what I'm seeing, get y'all's feedback. So it's a lot of fun. Definitely get in the free Discord. The link will be in the description. And then last but not least, I got to shout out the Dynasty Nerds Film Room. That is where we watch all of our film. Uh, so it's the best place that I know of to get all 22. So it's basically the price of a cup of coffee every month. You can use promo code COOP for 15% off. Get tons of all 22 on all of these rookie prospects. Get in there, scout them for yourself, see what you think. So with all of that out of the way, let's get into it, guys. Tonight... We are going to be talking about uh, one guy that is considered the top quarterback in the draft, and that's obviously Caleb Williams out of USC. And another guy that uh, definitely has seen his name rise recently, maybe a little bit under the radar, uh, Michigan's quarterback, J.J. McCarthy. I think as soon as the college season ended, people were wondering, would he even declare? I don't think a lot of people were not thinking of him as a top 15 pick at that point. The narrative was kind of, Hey, Michigan didn't even trust him to throw the football. So we're going to get into all that. See, is that is that true? Is he actually a guy that we want to be taking at the top of our rookie draft? So let's get right into it. And let's start with Caleb Williams. Six foot one, 214 pounds. Uh, he's a junior, early declare. Former five-star prospect, was the number two quarterback in his draft class. 
started out at Oklahoma, where he took the job from Spencer Rattler as a true freshman and then transferred with Lincoln Riley to USC, where he won a Heisman as a sophomore. So let's get into it. The production, obviously, very, very good. Uh, his final two seasons, he threw for over 3,500 yards both times, including a 4,500-yard campaign during his Heisman season. 42 touchdowns that year through the air. It's ridiculous. And uh, so let's get into kind of the traits, and we'll start with processing. I feel like that is so much of the quarterback game is, is played between the ears. And uh, and so I really we want to dig in as best we can. Obviously, we don't know, you know, what the plays were called, what his progressions were supposed to be. Um, but let's get into what we observed in the film with his processing and where we feel like he's at on that. And I'll start with you, Foz. What did you notice with Caleb Williams and his processing of the field? So I think for me, when it comes to processing, it's all about, you know, are they making their reads correctly? based on the coverage they're seeing and are they able to recognize the coverage pre-snap and then adjust post-snap if the coverage adjusts as well. And Caleb was able to do that at a very high level at USC. Um, and I think with one hand tied behind his back too, I don't, I'm not a big fan of his receivers or his um, the play calling that he received. And yet he was still able to deliver these balls on time despite the coverage. One play in um, particular comes to mind for me. It was down in the red zone against, I want to say, Washington. I'll po I'll post the clip on uh, my Twitter eventually um, after this comes out. He recognizes cover one. He's got a single high safety at the top. He's got man coverage underneath it, and he's able to look the safety off to the right side of the field. Then he comes back to the left and whips a back shoulder throw, and I mean whip one, like perfect, perfect, perfect. It is exactly the type of thing you want to see from like a franchise-altering quarterback, that type of ability to – know the coverage, know how to manipulate it, and then, you know, show off the arm talent as well. It was, it was, it was stark. And that was stuff like that was all over his, his tape. Everything regardless was, um was where it had to be. He was constantly making the correct read. Yeah. I saw yeah, know that exact same play. Yeah. yeah. Same play. I mean, it, that was, I, I believe that was fourth and two as well. Like to, the audacity to yeah. throw off platform, like 45, 50 yards down the field back shoulder on a fourth and two is nuts. But yeah, I, I remember that play. It, it jumped. So um, Rupert, what did you notice uh, with Caleb's processing? The exact same thing. And what I really like to see is he's able to play on schedule and like make decisions quickly as well as, have the ability to play off script as well. Um, one thing I noticed a lot, like he's not making a wow and negative plays to happen because he either makes a decision quickly or he kind of has like a backup plan where he can kind of, you know, get outside the pocket pocket or just manipulate the pocket to where he can, you know, make a, another play down the field and get to his third read. Um, it's really impressive. And you, you see why he's talked about as a generational talent. Yeah, he's one of these guys where I think if you give him more structure, he's gonna thrive. Like yeah. I know, like uh, I I always say Lane Kiffin when I mean Lincoln, Lincoln Riley. So if I do that, please please correct me. But Lincoln <laughs> Riley's offense gives a lot of freedom to the QB, and I think Cliff Kingsbury being there last year too had that element in it as well. But if he's going to the Bears and he's gonna run something a little more, um, you know, on script, he's going to, he can hit all those routes. He can hit all those timing West coast style routes. He doesn't need to be running air raid, my leech stuff. Yeah. So, I mean, I noticed some of the same things I love, like whenever I'm watching a quarterback, even if I don't know exactly what the progressions are or what they're supposed to be, when you see the head, like whipping left, right, you know, he's sitting there, he's doing his hitches. He's looking left, looking right. You can just see him working through it. And a lot of times I would see Caleb get to the second, third read, uh, and then make a, a throw on time and on target. Um, I thought he had a really good feel for the pocket. We'll talk more about pocket presence later. Uh, the one thing I will slightly disagree with you on, Rupert, you said that he didn't make a lot of negative plays. Um, I, I think that that's probably my biggest knock on Caleb is that he tried to play a little too much hero ball. I, and you hear people say this a lot, but it, like you mentioned, Foz, the receivers were not very good. Um, I think his O-line was a lot better during his Heisman campaign, and he had Jordan Addison. But this year, it, the supporting cast around him was just not great. And and I and the defense was 
like awful, awful. So he felt like, man, if we don't score every single time we touch the football, we're going to lose the football game. And and so he was definitely forcing some stuff. I, I think that's where, you know, you'd like to see what he can do off script, getting out of the pocket, escaping, throwing on the run. All the creativity is awesome. But sometimes he just took it just a little too far. It's like, man, you had an open check down and you instead you forced a really low percentage throw. Or, you know, you, you should have thrown it out of bounds, but you took a sack or – you know what? Uh, fumbles was an issue. He had 17 fumbles in three seasons, and a lot of times when he's doing the running around, you know, trying to escape the pocket, he's kind of holding the ball out away from his body yeah. with one arm, just being a little too loose with it. So I did see some negative plays that came um, from from trying to force it, but otherwise, I, I thought the processing overall was really, really good. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. My biggest knock was ball security with him. And, uh, yeah, I, I, he does have negative plays. I don't disagree with that at all. I was kind of comparing him to Drake May. I feel like Drake May would, you know, end up just taking a sack, like, on a lot of plays where, you know, Caleb Williams has, like, a backup plan. He's, like, he gets pressure right away, but he has a, a plan in mind. Um, so, I feel like it, it could have been a lot more negative plays, if that makes sense, because I did yeah. think his line was quite leaky. Um, yeah, he had a great feel for escaping pressure. Um, like, great. Very natural, very creative in that, uh, for sure. So let's move on. Uh, the next category is arm talent, and we definitely talked about that a little bit with that throw. He whipped back on that fourth and two, but, I mean, we're talking about – Throwing with anticipation. We're talking about throwing with accuracy, placing the ball where it needs to be, uh, the the power on the deep ball, throwing at different arm angles, all that kind of stuff. Uh, there, there's so much that goes into that kind of buzz phrase, arm talent. But, um, Rupert, what did you notice from Caleb in terms of his arm talent? It is absolutely generational. Arm talent is insane. I Multiple times, I'm like, that was just such an arrogant throw like to make. You're rolling back to your left, and you throw it 50 yards down the field to the right hash. It's like, <laughs> how would you even think that you could get that there, like not even having a, a base to throw that? Um, it's He can throw it from any arm angle. He doesn't even have to have proper footwork, which most quarterbacks, you know, they have to have their feet in line and everything kind of working in sync to throw the ball accurately. And he just throws a dot with, Horrible for work, if I'm being honest, on some throws. But um, his, his one thing I noticed, he doesn't just throw lasers. Like some guys that have like that mm-hmm. crazy arm strength, they'll just throw lasers on, you know, a little slant or, you know, crossing route. Like he throws it with nice touch, a very easy catchable ball. Kind of reminded me of Andrew Luck in a way where he, he knows how to, to tone it down and throw a softball to make it easier, like when a guy is like running, you know, full speed across the field. Um, So uh, he showed a lot of awareness, like with his touch, everything like that. It was just, it's his most special trade in my opinion. Yeah, I totally agree with that. I, the, the touch, I, I noticed it a bunch of times. It was just like this sweet, soft little, like right Mm -hmm. over the linebacker, easy to catch. Uh, So definitely I, I made that same note. What about you, Foss? What did you notice with the arm talent? I mean, yeah, I, I fully agree. Generational, like generational type stuff, like all nines and 110 for the grading system. You know, if it, we're doing it out of 10, it's just everywhere. It didn't matter if it was deep ball to the sideline, over the middle of the field. Everything was on time, too. Like the anticipation, the timing, every ball was out when it has to be. And that is such a huge thing at the next level that – can set a QB apart, and that's and that's what it is. Like they're, the ball is there when the receivers turn around or get out of their break, and that's that's something that's hard to coach and hard to teach. And then you know layering over defenders and before the safety is like well, getting it over the linebacker and under the safety is a big skill, and he can do it. It's really something. It's special. Different arm angles. Like doesn't matter. Like as Rupert was saying, right? Doesn't matter platform or no platform, air not in the, like all over the place it's going to get to where it has to go it's really special it's his best quality by far is that that cannon on his right arm yeah i mean this is where the the mahomes comparisons come in too which you know feels unfair to any kid coming into the nfl 
to compare him to, you know, one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time already. Um, but the arm talent is where those comparisons come in, throwing off of crazy angles, off platform, on the run, just dropping these dimes 60 yards down the field through the air, like in his lap, like it was a handoff, just crazy stuff. The only thing I, I noticed to even like slightly nitpick was that he was more accurate throwing deep balls to the middle of the field. There were a few plays along the sideline where I don't know if he was just trying to be too conservative, taking care of the football, but he was like trying to throw these back shoulder throws where only his receiver could get it, but it really was so far out of bounds that Mm -hmm. nobody had a shot at it. And so I would have liked to have seen him kind of put the ball, make it catchable, uh, which a lot of times it, it felt like he didn't, but um I don't even want to say a lot of times just it was something that I noticed probably three or four times that um some of the the sideline deep balls were just nowhere close but yeah the anticipation too I, I mean he's kind of almost got a reputation for the the scrambling throwing off script off whatever but like when a guy would break open and he it, it was he was throwing it before the receiver made his break. He was throwing it multiple times within the script of the offense, you know, drop back, hitch, throw it, timing, like you said, beautiful timing, right as the guy's coming out of his break, it's waiting on him. So I think in some ways he gets um, a little bit of a, a bad rap uh, for something that just because he can make those spectacular plays doesn't mean he doesn't ever do it within the flow of the offense. So, um let's move on here and talk about uh caleb's mechanics what do you guys see and we'll start with Foz from a mechanical standpoint yeah i mean they're good they're they're good i don't think they're you know special he can throw without them like he can throw the off platform stuff really well i think he has a very quick release like and you can see the power from his throws when he releases it um it's very efficient his lower half is definitely where I have problems. There's one play in particular I, c- I can't get out of my head. It's against US. It's, it's against UCLA, and he's rolling out to his ref- his right. He's got a perfectly clean pocket, and he decides to throw on the run for no reason as he's rolling, and the ball just like kind of sputters at the feet of the receiver running across like a deep crosser. And it's just one of those things where, where I was like, if his mechanics were a little more refined, or if he was focusing a little bit on them, that throws a you know a perfect strike every time. So little lapses like that are a little bit of a concern when it comes to the mechanics. Mechanics are something you can improve if you really try and and put effort into it. And coming off like a Heisman season, a Heisman season where he probably doesn't have a ton to work on, the mechanics are definitely something he he should. And if those get you know refined, you know, look out, sky's the sky's the limit. But that's just where I was kind of like a little iffy. Where like yeah, the off platform stuff's great, but he's he's stuff he can clean up for sure. Yeah, hundred percent agree. Like my two nitpicks with him are ball security and then his lower body mechanics. Uh, he would just rely on his, you know, arrogant arm talent, uh, and you know he just wouldn't always use proper footwork, and he gets away with it, you know, eighty five percent of the time. Um, but yeah, like you said, if he cleans that up, and yeah, sky's the limit. Great stuff. Well, let's uh, let's combine these last two because I think they kind of go hand in hand. But pocket presence and mobility. Um, what did we see here? I know. I mean, obviously, you see all the highlights where he's just breaking guys' ankles and running around doing the crazy stuff, buying time. Um, I thought it was fantastic. I, I thought it was right up there with his arm talent in terms of potentially being his best trait. But uh, Rupert, we'll start with you. What did you notice uh, with the pocket presence? And and you can kind of touch on the mobility while you're talking about it. Agreed. I thought it was special. Uh, he has a incredibly natural and very calm feel. Like he's, you know, kind of scrambling like inside the pocket, moving around, but still diagnosing the defense down the field and finding his open guy. It, most guys, their heads go down, they panic, Drake May, and he uh, he doesn't do that. He finds this guy, wild time, guys, time to get open, 
he does a good job kind of manipulating the D-line. Like, he'll fake like he's starting to go to the right just to open a hole back to the left where he can just slide over two feet. Um, it's just a lot of special stuff. He has incredibly natural feel with it. Um, and then once he gets outside of the pocket, he's pretty athletic. He has, I saw him put some nasty spin moves on guys, a little dead legs occasionally. Um, so I, I don't – an offense isn't going to be built around him running, but – it's kind of like Aaron Rodgers where, you know, he's going to get a couple hundred yards a year just scrambling. Um, so he's, he's got all the talent in the world in this category. I think, I think Aaron Rodgers is like perfect, like running comp. Like, cause I was like pleasantly surprised with how good of a runner he was. I didn't know. Yeah. I knew he was mobile, but I didn't think he was going to be able to pick up big chunks like he did. And it reminded me exactly like Aaron Rodgers back in his prime where you'd look up and be like, Oh my God, how do you just get 30 yards? Like, there's yeah. nothing there. Like, what's going on? Right. But, yeah, I was impressed with his pocket presence and his mobility overall. I, the, the Notre Dame game is so hard to ignore. Mm. And his, like, pressure to sack, like, numbers, you know, if you want to, you know, do a little bit of analytics. Like, it's not, like, it's not great. It's really not good. He invites a lot of pressure onto himself, like, relative to his peers. And, again, that Notre Dame game where he's just – he's got the balls all over the place. He's got nothing – like he's got nothing. It, it was it, it was crazy. I was I was shocked. Um, that's just one game, and everyone's allowed to have a, a bad game. Um, I think one of his best traits is keeping his eyes downfield when he is mm-hmm. scrambling. Like he's trying to hit the big play, and that's huge. That's huge. It's better for him to hit the big play than you know pick up whatever he can on the ground for sure. Whereas with someone like Jaden Daniels, maybe you know you want Daniels, you know ripping off those fifty yard runs, but. Mm-hmm. But Caleb, I was I was impressed o- impressed overall more with his like mobility than his pocket presence. But it's not like I don't I wouldn't say it's a fatal flaw as long as he can really work on work on getting those sack numbers down. Um, it reminded me a lot of uh, in a bad way Justin Fields, where you know like all the tools are there, all the talents there, but it's like man, you just gotta you can't take the sacks like despite your mobility. So I'm hoping that's not what's going to happen at the next level of Caleb Williams. I don't think that's going to happen. I think he's much better than Justin Fields was and will be much better than Justin Fields. Yeah, I mean, and Justin Fields had a lot of the fumble issues too. So there is definitely, it's at least a concern that's worth noting, holding on to the ball and fumbling were, were the two things that, you know, holding on to the ball too long and fumbling were the two things with Fields and it didn't matter how athletic he was, like, that still was an issue. So it is something I think he'll have to clean up the, the notes that I made. I felt like he had a good feel for the pocket um, in terms of just being efficient with his movements, knowing when to just make a subtle move, like it's just a step up or a sidestep versus when to make a more exaggerated move and totally escape the pocket. Um, and the escapability when he did that is insane. I mean, forward, backward, left, right, spinning around, like, just so much creativity. The, the guy that he reminded me of uh, was Russell Wilson, like early career Russell Wilson when he had a little bit of the legs and yeah. he's just a magician and, and he's extending plays for like 10 whole seconds and, and going left to right and covering the whole field and then somehow finding everybody. And Russell Wilson was very much like the um, what I see from Caleb in that you guys noted it when he scrambles, he's scrambling with his eyes downfield. He's scrambling to pass. He's not scrambling to run, uh, except kind of as a last resort, which I felt the same about, uh, Russell Wilson. Another thing Russell Wilson did in his prime was he took care of himself. You know, he, he was good at getting out of bounds or sliding, not taking the big hit, which I think Caleb is the same in that regard. And then the kind of negative way that he reminds me of Russell Wilson is that even in his prime, he really wasn't that fast. Um, Caleb, to me, his speed is okay. I mean, for a quarterback, it's it's pretty solid. But nobody's going to mistake him for a Justin Fields or Lamar Jackson, you know, Jaden Daniels. Like he's he's not that explosive. His his running, where he make he he's more elusive than he is fast. Uh, I think, and and he does a really good job because he keeps his eyes downfield. Like people can't run full at him because they're afraid that he's going to throw it over their heads. Um, and he does these beautiful pump fakes that kind of, you know, he just, he's very, very crafty, but I worry a little bit like what we saw from Bryce young last year 
where he did a lot of scrambling and was really mobile in college, but just wasn't quite fast enough to do it at the NFL level. He couldn't get away from anybody. He wouldn't wouldn't outrun defensive ends to the edge like he was able to do in college. So I, I do think speed is not like the best trait for Caleb Williams, but it's not bad enough to where I'm like overly concerned about it. But I think it's it's worth noting when we're talking about mobility. So well, I think we have covered Caleb Williams uh, pretty in depth here, 25 minutes, and we're just talking about one guy. It just kind of shows how good he is. But uh, let's move on to our other prospect. We're talking JJ McCarthy, six foot two, 219 pound junior out of Michigan, former four star prospect, was the number six quarterback in his class. The numbers don't pop off the screen, never cleared 3,000 yards in a season. Uh, this year he threw uh, for 2,991 yards, so he got real close to that 3,000 mark and 22 touchdowns. So I uh, believe just four interceptions, which is pretty nice for um, for that number. 22 to four is a good touchdown interception ratio. Um, and we'll try to work through this, this guy a little bit quicker, um, but still be thorough for you guys. Let's talk processing. Foz, what do you love about J.J. McCarthy? I know he's your guy. Tell me a little bit about the processing. What's that shirt you got on? Michigan National Champs. There you go. You're on mute. Foz, you're muted. I thought I unmuted. I'm sorry. Oh, but yeah, I'll try to put my bias aside. I've been following McCarthy since he was, you know, a prospect like on the recruiting trail. Like, and he's his career went exactly how I'd ever dreamed it would have at Michigan. But anyway, yeah, he's he's like an elite processor. He knows where to go with the ball when it snapped to him. Um, anytime the pocket breaks down, he knows how to get out of get out of it. Knows how to find the his open guy or run if he needs to. Recognizing coverage is one of his probably best traits. He, it's uncanny how much he knows what's going on. Um, there's that the touchdown he threw against Ohio State this year, where he knows when the defender is turning around and zips it right by his ear, like like he's a hockey yep. like he's a hockey player shooting by the goalie's ear. It's it was crazy. He did that um, multiple times. I was I was expecting to only see it like once, but I feel like I saw yeah, that, it like four or five. That times. was the famous one, but it was all over the tape. It wasn't yeah. just just the one time. Yeah, he knows. He he know he knows where everyone is. He knows what everyone has to do, and he's doing it in an NFL scheme, not one of these, like, uh, like air raid offenses, like you see from Lane Kiffin or Lincoln Riley, or that you see with um, in Washington with Penix, and so it's stuff he's gonna have to do at the next level too, with like checking to different formations, checking to different plays, getting in the right runs, getting in the right passes, and knowing what to do with the ball once it's snapped to you. Uh, playing with the running back behind you rather than next to you all the time, which is helpful for the quarterback, um, l less than a hindrance. But, yeah, I, I mean, I could go on and on, but I'll let Rupert go too. <laughs> I agree. I saw the same thing. He he knew exactly where his open man was going to be, I feel like, almost every play. And when that wasn't the case, he scrambled, tried to make something happen. Um, I felt like he did a lot with a little uh, at, at Michigan. And um, I think that was a lot of it was due to his ability to process and kind of know where he's going. Saw so multiple times where, you know, they would put a guy in motion. He'd recognize his man, go to, you know, his man beat a route, things like that. Um, really, really enjoyed watching that. I wasn't expecting to like him as much as I did, if I'm being honest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I didn't know what to think because I, I heard a lot of people early in the process that were like, yeah, this guy's not a first round pick. And then and then all of a sudden, all of the, the top 15 buzz kind of just, man, picked up a ton of steam. And and then I saw a bunch of analysts that I really like and respect that, you know, dug into the film and said, yeah, he didn't have a lot of volume, but what's there is really good. Um, and so this was my first time kind of looking at him and there were some things that I, I really, really liked um, and, and processing. I, I think there were, I wanted to see him get to a second read more often than what I saw. Um, it, it felt like, and maybe this is to what you're speaking about Foz that like, because he was doing the checks and he was reading the defense pre-snap so well that he would call a play where his first look was going to get open. And he knew before he even snapped the ball exactly where he was going to go with it, that, 
you know, it, it, to me, it felt like he would hang on the first read a little bit too long. There was one play in particular that stood out to me with this it, it, against Ohio State where um, he snapped it. He had press on both sides, one with Roman Wilson, one with Cornelius Johnson. And his first look was Roman. Roman did not win. Shocker. Um, <laughs> and if McCarthy would have looked over to his left to his second read, Cornelius Johnson torched the guy off the line and was wide open, like throwing his hands up deep down the field. It would have been a walk-in touchdown. And he didn't come off the first read. He forced it to Roman Wilson in, in, you know, very tight coverage, really never had a chance. It was an incompletion. It wasn't an interception or anything. But it it just – there were too many plays where it felt like, all right, he's going to hang for two, three seconds on that first read. And then if it's not there, he's going to scramble out to the right rather than really sitting in the pocket and working his way through two or three progressions. So that that was my nitpick on him with the processing. But there were so many plays, too, where it was like snap and then instant, just the really quick recognition, all right, this guy's open, get it out, on time, on target, so many times, very, very quickly. Like if that first read was open, which it was a lot, you know, that ball was coming out. It was on time, on target every time, even in a tight window, even if he had to zip it past somebody's ear, like you're talking about, uh, he was really good in, in those situations. So let's talk. Um, that's a, I, go ahead. I, I can I can pick up on that nitpick too. That's, I mean, that's one of the real things, like watching him in real time every week is like, like, dude, the guy's covered. Like he would just catch it and throw it. And it, particularly on these little out routes, these like five yard outs, the guy's mm-hmm. covered. Like, you know, you can like let it breathe a little bit. JJ, like, you know, you can take a second, take a beat. You don't need to just whip it in there. And that was a big 2022 thing with JJ. I think he got better this year, but it's definitely still a thing where it's like, okay, you know, he's not afraid to throw into the coverage. That's for sure. You know? Yeah, for sure. So let's talk arm talent, anticipation, accuracy, deep ball, arm power, all the same stuff we talked about with Caleb. What did you guys notice with JJ? And I'll start with you, Rupert. I thought it's solid arm talent. You know, nothing that's generational, but I feel like he has a, you know, good kind of quick release. And he, he does serve from multiple angles at, at times. Uh, I thought he did a really good job. Like when he scrambled to his left to be able to kind of have the torque to kind of whip it around and, you know, get on target throw deep down the field. Um, I, I really liked his accuracy. It was really, really good. And it, he has a lot of confidence because he throws into really tight windows a lot because his guys aren't getting much separation. Um, but I also the same thing with Caleb. Like I thought he had really good touch as well. Um, he's able to wear the throw, get it over that linebacker's ear. Um, I wouldn't say like his arm, like power to be able to like, you know, throw a 60, 70 yard bomb is, uh, you know, up there, it's definitely not up there with the other three guys that are in the top of this class, but I think it's totally sufficient for the NFL. Any notes there, Foz, that you would add or? Yeah, he, he throws like a million miles an hour. It's like the media and short routes. I wish he would have more touch in that, but like layering in the deep routes, his touch is incredible. It's one of those things where like he needs to develop it better in the shorter or intermediate, intermediate routes. Cause yeah, the power to get it to like, deep places may not be as good as like Caleb Williams, but he can get it there like pretty, pretty consistently. There's one throw against Purdue. Like he's on the right hash and throws it to like the left sideline, like 50 yards across the field, drops in the bucket to Donovan Edwards. And it's like, it's, it's a bananas throw. That's the one that always sticks out to me, but yeah, everything like his accuracy, I think could be a little better. There are times where like, he's like maybe at the feet or maybe, throwing it to, you know, a little high and wide at, at times, mostly high and wide to like the, the shorter stuff. And I think some more touch. I think a lot of Michigan's drops this year were because the ball's coming in 10,000 miles an hour when it's like a five yard, like in. So there's yeah, definitely some stuff there to work on, but he's got, he's got the, he's got the talent to like be good at the next level for sure. Yeah. I saw a lot of drops. I, I felt like uh, as compared to Caleb, which is not fair really to compare anybody to Caleb. Cause we, I mean, we said in arm talent, he was generational, but, um, you know, I thought J.J. did a really good job throwing on the run and still throwing it with zip and with accuracy uh, when he was rolling out, particularly to his right. Um, but when he was off-platform in the pocket specifically, 
So um, not talking about rolling out, throwing on the run, but like backpedaling or throwing off of his back foot. He didn't throw it off platform. I don't think nearly as well as, as Caleb did. Uh, and just wasn't able to get as much juice on those throws. They were less accurate. Um, most of the time when he was doing that, it was pretty much just a throwaway. It wasn't like, oh yeah, he's going to throw it off his back foot and it's going to drop in the bucket and be a completion to somebody. I don't know if y'all would agree with that. Definitely. Yeah. yeah he, he's one of those guys where his lower half needs to be tied to his upper body for the most part to throw accurately. And I, I thought that was something that he improved on as the year went on. Um, I kind of thought at the beginning he was a little too quick with his feet. Um, so he likes to kind of start with his feet first and it wasn't quite a line. Now I thought that he really improved on that as the year went on. Um, yeah. So I thought his, by the end of the year, like his lower body mechanics are really solid. Uh, but I totally agree. He's not a guy that's going to be able to throw like off platform and accurately all the time. Yeah. So let's move on to mechanics. I think that's a natural segue. If, if his mechanics have to be on point, how were they, <laughs> you know, uh, because, you know, if he's not throwing it well and with velocity and with accuracy, when he is throwing with poor mechanics, then he needs to be throwing it with good mechanics a lot. <laughs> so what, what did you notice? We'll start with you, Foz. Yeah. Overall, his mechanics are like really good overall. Um, efficient release. It comes out quick. He's not one of these mm -hmm. guys. That's like, you know, the, there's a long windup. Um, I think his lower half is something that definitely needs work, even in the pocket where there are times where, and I don't think it's killed him, but there are times where his feet and upper body aren't aligned. So like he, he'll is like, his feet will be kind of pointing square to like the middle of the field. Then the ball will come out like kind of like a flip and come out kind of crooked almost where, and everything's not going the same direction. That's when you have inaccurate throws. So really, you know, we really, I'm sure he's working on it. Like, you know, flip your hips and, deliver when you're ready to throw, but that's definitely something he needs to work on in the pocket, particularly. Yeah. I mean, I thought like the, the, the hip flexion, I guess you can call it like, you know, when Dax in his warmups doing his little like, uh, hip yeah. gyrations, <laughs> I felt like that, you know, JJ did a really good job of that. I, I thought on most of his throws, he really, you know, he got his whole body into it and he generated a lot of torque and a lot of zip on his throws and, um, overall it was, it was more good than bad in the mechanics department. And, um, I totally agree about the quick throwing motion. I mean, it, that thing was just zipped right out of there. Um, which it's, it's important, you know, uh, at, at the NFL level where you're going to have less time than ever, um, to make a decision and get the ball out quick. Like you've got to have a compact throwing motion. We've seen it kill guys careers. Um, I even think of like a Tim Tebow where it was just like, <laughs> the throwing motion just took like an hour. <laughs> it's like, yeah. it's never going to work in the NFL. So um, it is, it's a big deal. So let's, let's move on to our last uh, two. We'll combine them again here, pocket presence and mobility, um, speed, escapability, explosiveness. Um, personally, I thought JJ McCarthy looked faster than Caleb Williams to me, um, which I wasn't expecting. Not as creative, um, not as elusive, but, in a straight line faster. So uh, what did you guys think? We'll start with you, Rupert. Yeah, I saw the exact same thing. I, uh, there's a couple of plays where he kind of breaks it up, up the middle. And I'm like, whoa, look at that explosion. And, you know, he goes for 25 yards or something like that. And I was like, I didn't see that coming. Uh, yeah. I agree. Like he doesn't have as much, you know, wiggle or, you know, creativity to make moves. But, you know, it's something that he has in his back pocket, which, you know, not every quarterback has in the NFL, which is, you know, a nice little plus. I thought his pocket presence was solid, not spectacular, not really a detriment. Um, I I do feel like he, he would get out of the pocket sometimes too quick instead of hanging in when he could have just hung in a little bit longer. Um, so I, I would have liked to have seen him hang in longer, but there are, you know, plays on his tape where he's hanging in, you know, to the last second throwing a, you know, touchdown to the left and takes a shot. Um, but, you know, a lot of times he's just like, I'm going to get out of pocket because I need to, you know, create something out to the right. But, uh, you know, I, I think that's something I would like to see him work on at the next level. 
Yeah, I think a lot of that might have to do it. The, the Penn State game is really like the canary in the coal mine for, I think, the J.J. McCarthy Michigan experience, <laughs> where this year especially, they could not protect. They couldn't protect them at all. Um, I think he was pressured on 30% of his dropbacks, and that might have to do with kind of his skittishness of like wanting to escape right away, which, yeah, I would like to see the same thing, like him stand in. But his tackles just could not block. It was it was crazy. Like and when it was funny in the pro you know, in the draft process when you know looking you're looking at like who people are talking about tackles, like, oh yeah, Michigan's gonna have like three tackles drafted this year. It's like they should not have any tackles drafted. Anyway, <laughs> I digress. Um, no, it must be great run blockers because they did a lot of that. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, but, but yeah, but um but but yeah, I mean I think he was good at like kind of finding the rush and trying to manipulate the pocket there. There are times where he does get himself in trouble. He's one of these guys that likes to spin backwards and get depth to kind of get around the edge. And yeah. that can get you into a lot of trouble sometimes. Like sometimes it's best to just kind of go forward and step up and then take the sack if you have to, rather than try to spin out deeper and take huge losses, which he did quite a bit this year. Um, I didn't look up his like sack yardage or whatever, but I'm sure it's substantial because the sacks he did take were pretty, pretty deep in the, in the pocket. There was never a time where he was just like, Oh, Balls in my hands and now I'm sacked. It's it's you know it was a long process for him to take a sack, but but yeah, he definitely needs to improve that when it comes to pocket pass. His mobility is great. Like I think he can yeah. run. I, I love like the play you're talking about. I think is the national championship against Washington where they're trying they're playing like field position in the middle of that game with Washington and Washington's mm -hmm. winning the, the battle and then he rips off like a 25 yard run when he's backed up against the end zone and yep. that totally changes the momentum of the the rest of the game there where they go down and get a few more first downs. They have to punt, but now the field's flipped and then they end up you know. Do suffocating them field possession the other way, field position the other way. So, you know, stuff like that. He scored a lot of touchdowns on the ground too. He was, you know, he he I think he scored one against again. He scored one against Ohio State last year, two in the playoff against TCU on the ground. Um, so he he's a running threat for sure. Um, he's not yeah. going to get you like Jaden Daniels a thousand yards, but he's going to get you a couple hundred for sure. Yeah, yeah. He had some acceleration that you know defeated angles. Surprised me. It clearly surprised the DBs too because they were like not in position to tackle him. Um, I, I agree with with some of the concerns you guys mentioned about the pocket presence. So I'm not gonna do too much of kind of uh, repeating what you guys already said. I I did think he did a good job um, when he would see a guy about to break open and knew that he needed just to tick longer, but saw the pressure coming. I thought he did a great job of standing in the pocket and delivering the throw, knowing that he was about to get blasted. That was a strength that I saw multiple times on film. Um, and, you know, but I, I didn't think when you compare again, comparing to Caleb Williams, which again is not fair. Um, that guy was playing 3D chess. You know, it's like forwards, backwards, left, right, spin, whatever. Like the whole field was open to him. McCarthy, I thought was much more one dimensional. You know, it's like, he is going to stand in the pocket and look. And if nobody's open after a couple of seconds, he's going to scramble to his right. He almost never, I almost never saw him go left. Um, it, he's going to scramble to his right. And so that's going to eliminate half the field. And so he's going to throw on the sideline uh, on the right side of the field. And, and he, he threw some great darts to the sideline. I thought that was a huge strength, like throwing on the run, hitting guys on the boundaries but it just felt so much more one dimensional because I, I watched them in the same day. Like I had just finished watching Caleb and, and then I watched McCarthy and it was like, okay, he's in the pocket. He's going right. He's in the pocket. He's going right. He's in the pocket. He's going right. And it just felt noticeably more one dimensional to me. So I, I thought that was worth bringing up, but don't know if you guys saw the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I, <laughs> I was I always encouraged to scramble. I can think of one, I actually I went to the Indiana game this year when they played, and I can think of one scramble to his right. He directs Loveland downfield and just delivers a strike, and Loveland runs it the rest of the way for a touchdown. And you know stuff like that is just I mean it's great. You know it's like schoolyard, and he can do that mm -hmm. too. But but yeah, mostly do his right for sure. When he was spinning out to his left and taking those deep sacks, that's when that is. He tries to you know that do the backward spin to the left, and that's when he takes the sack. Yeah, he yeah. looked a lot less comfortable doing that to me going mm -hmm. left, but. Um, yeah, let's uh, let's wrap up here. Just overall thoughts. I mean, we've kind of gone trait by trait, but we haven't really talked about like, you know, where we're at on these guys dynasty wise, where we'd take them in rookie drafts. Um, I'm assuming we all agree Caleb's the 101 in Superflex leagues um, and, in, and in the NFL draft. 
very that's yep. definitely how I feel about it. So yeah, we're all nodding our heads. Um, so JJ McCarthy is is more of the question. Like, all right, do first of all, are we buying that he's a top fifteen NFL draft pick? And then second of all, even if that ends up being the case and he is top fifteen, um, where would you take him in a rookie draft? And and where does he rank amongst these other quarterbacks to you? So we'll start with Foz because I know you're going to be the highest. Yeah. So um, I think for fantasy though, like I think NFL wise, JJ McCarthy is going to be going to be awesome. Like I would love to have. I, I'm a Patriots fan. I would love for the Patriots draft him at number three. And for me, um, fantasy wise, it's really like. Caleb's one the first QB for sure. And then I think you have to take Daniels just because of the thousand yard rushing stuff. Like that's impossible mm-hmm. to ignore unless your QB settings are all wild. For sure. And then and then it's like a coin flip between for me for Drake May and JJ McCarthy. Because I feel like I have a lot of questions and problems with Drake May. But <laughs> McCarthy, like, you know, I think there might be some upside cap with him. They're both young, so they both have a lot of room to grow, I think. Um I think you know 109, 108, 109, depending in in your super flex drafts. Like that seems to be where I draft McCarthy. If it's one QB, maybe I'm letting someone else draft him. Um, but yeah, for NFL, like I think McCarthy can run any NFL offense, just like not Washington. I want nothing to do with Cliff Kingsbury <laughs> yeah. getting his hands on George McCarthy. Like don't let like give him like structure, give him the West Coast offense, or give him some like power run offense. And let him cook. Let him do his shifts. Let him do his checks. And let him deliver the ball when you need him to deliver the ball. And he will do it. Yeah, man. I mean, wouldn't that shock the world if they drafted him at number two? That'd be oh. that'd be crazy. Uh, what about you, Rupert? Are you buying the top fifteen draft capital hype? And where would you take him in a rookie draft? Where do you rank him with these quarterbacks? I definitely buy it. I don't see him getting past Vikings. I. I wasn't expecting to be real excited about him going in and I came away like really excited. I think he has such a safe floor. Um, I think like my comp would be like an Andy Dalton plus, you know, a little bit more rushing upside. Um, you know, I think he's going to be a solid starter in the league. You know, like Foz said, he may not have the highest ceiling. Uh, I have him as QB three just cause I have too many questions with Drake may. I think Drake may could easily, you know, surpass him, but I, I think there's just much more risk there. Um, if Drake may ends up going to like the perfect landing spot, like the Vikings or something like that, you know, it may bump him up over McCarthy depending on where he ends up. But uh, I'm, I'm excited about him. I'm real excited that there's four quarterbacks to get excited about in the first round of rookie drafts. Yeah, I see it similarly. Um, and that, you know, so I'm not going to, waste time saying the same things, I, but I do, I totally agree. Caleb and, and Daniels are the one, two uh, in, in dynasty, just from a fantasy upside floor ceiling perspective. And then the, the tougher call is between, you know, it's, do you want to shoot for the ceiling of Drake may with the crazy arm talents and the 60 yard bombs and, and the whole thing that he could legitimately be like a Justin Herbert or Josh Allen type, or do you want to go with uh, a JJ McCarthy who is, you know, it's not like he can't do anything uh, and the floor definitely feels safer, but you know, what, what is his ceiling? I mean, what, is there a guy that comes to mind in the NFL? I know you mentioned Andy Dalton Foz. Do you have a comp um, for JJ McCarthy? Like, like a ceiling, if everything went perfect, what, what would his fantasy career look like? I don't, I don't know why he can't like be like a Dak Prescott type and get to like the okay. QB five or four like area, okay. right. Where he gets you a couple hundred on the ground. Maybe he has a year where he has like eight or nine touchdowns on the ground. And then, you know, he takes a step as a passer, like, or we finally see what he looks like when he's, you know, has volume and like wide receivers around him and has to play the whole game instead of, yeah. three quarters. <laughs> you know, right. like, and, you know, we see his numbers take a big leap, too. I think that's where I could see him kind of topping out. He's never going to be like, you know, the like the one of one. Like, Caleb Williams could be the one of one, like, you know, two years from now, right? Where he's got 15 rushing touchdowns and, like, 40 touchdowns and stuff like that. But, like, J.J. Mm-hmm. McCarthy is not going to be that. Um, but, yeah, that's what I can see with his, like, his ceiling for sure. And I think he's not situation dependent. I think he could do that no matter where he goes, except for Washington. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like that that comp. I could definitely see that. I mean, I already mentioned the hip gyration, so they got that in common. But uh we are over time here. It's always fun talking quarterbacks, and there's it feels like there's just a lot more to say about quarterbacks than than other positions. But 
appreciate you guys that were watching live with us and those of y'all that'll watch later as we wrap up uh john slash foz where can they find you on twitter my handle right there at fosbury 64 f-o-z berry 64 that's where i'm at that's where i do like all my posting awesome man y'all make sure you follow him he definitely knows his stuff and uh, appreciate you coming on man rupert where can they find you you can find me at matthew rupert ff on twitter sweet and you can find me at couch scouts ff on twitter uh if you're listening on apple Podcasts, you can also find the youtube channel youtube.com slash at couch scouts if you want to come on and see the michigan michigan national championship shirt and some of the other <laughs> the hip gyrations all the fun fun stuff that you don't get on the audio but um if you're on apple leave us a five-star review if you're on youtube like comment sub we appreciate you guys even that have engaged in the chat live while we've been on here so uh yeah appreciate y'all tuning in and we'll see you next week the week of the draft we're gonna be mixing things up we're gonna be doing a um it's our it's gonna be our final pre-nfl draft rookie mock for dynasty and we're gonna have some guests on here Foz will be back we'll have a couple other guys uh jackson will be back with us so Definitely want to tune in for that and uh, make sure to join that free discord and we'll see you next week. Thank you.